Industrial Light and Magic is one of the world's best special effects studios, creating effects for some of the biggest Hollywood movies in the past 25 years. From Star Wars to Iron Man, ILM has always been on the cutting edge of the special effects industry. But over the last few years, ILM has been employing new technology on films like Harry Potter 6 and The Last Airbender that are once again changing the effects industry. Here at Lucasfilm, technology has always been a means to an end for the creative vision. Our clients come to us to, and ask for breakthrough things that have never been seen before, from 150-foot waves to fire that can be manipulated around a scene. And typically, we have to build the software that does that. And whenever we get a hold of a piece of technology that's going to have a significant impact on what we do, we are all over it. We work onto it, and we're usually taking it to a whole other level that perhaps the manufacturer didn't even expect. We've been finding that with the uh, NVIDIA GPU technology. By an order of magnitude, we're getting improvements on things of simulation that uh, in the past would have taken hours, if not days. We're now getting it down to minutes. ILM's first significant foray into GPU computing was for the film Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, where they were asked to create a tornado of fire. Starting in November of the year before the movie came out, we had a meeting to talk about sort of the state of art of doing fire for visual effects. We had a concept art for the film that we got from the client that had specific images of a fire tornado that we knew was beyond what we had tools for in-house at the time. We had a couple of filmed pieces of fire that we stuck on sprites and tried to get to follow particles around in a tornado and it didn't look that convincing, but in the process of doing so, we started experimenting with more and more card-based, particle-driven effects. And at that time, someone introduced me to OpenGL and GLSL, and specifically using um, NVIDIA Quadro 4800. And just realizing how much data I could push around, I started experimenting with whether or not I could create a little bit more simulation stuff in the sprites themselves, instead of just using filmed elements. And so over time, we started to get more and more exciting results from having actual sims taking place on the sprites using programmable shaders, essentially, in OpenGL. And we got to the point where we realized we could have, you know, essentially sprites that were 2K in resolution that we could put onto the card and do simulations at the final film resolution detail. That's how we began trying to figure out how to do what eventually became the system that we call Verte now. We actually found that being able to have things broken up slice by slice made it possible to fix errors and go back and make changes in a relatively quick way. So we ended up keeping the slice-based architecture even though the card probably could have supported a full res sim. And as you know, you know we have since developed new technology where the sim is done as a, a full three-dimensional sim in, in the card at once, and that is produced fantastic results as well. That 3D sim was used as a basis to create the fire effects for The Last Airbender. One of the things that, that changed from um, the Potter fire to, to, to TLA is the introduction of CUDA. On Potter, we still were using OpenGL. We still uh, were trying to force OpenGL to do high-performance computing kind of trick it. With CUDA, it completely changed everything because we were having access, direct access, to the, to, to the computing power of the board. We had a window of six months to develop this uh, to a point where we could be satisfied with the results. One of the main goals was to develop in a way that's as easily as possible, and CUDA allowed this because it's so easy to code in it. One of the things that also uh, was decided very early on is to tie this solver, the actual simulation part, to the rendering part. This is something that we learned on Potter, and very quickly we saw that it was, it was key for artists to be able to iterate quickly over a particular shot where they would actually see the direct final render instead of seeing a temporary visualization of the simulation data. The work that we did on Airbender was groundbreaking. For the first time, we were able to produce simulations that were able to be done in a very interactive time. Uh, meaning the director could work with the technology teams and they together could kind of shape the scene and bring it to life. In the past that would have taken weeks or not even months and then come back and there would be iterations that would go on and on. Now we're getting those things down to being as close to real time as possible. The goal was to get to a point where we could offer the, our client, M. Knight, uh, 
the ability to, to influence how the fire was going to look, how it was going to be controlled, how it was going to interact with, uh, with characters in a scene. And, and that was the kind of control that we were after by doing it CG, and, and that's the goal of this entire enterprise, to get as much, con uh, as much flexibility, flex flexibility as possible for the director to, to guide us and, 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 and get what he wants, ultimately. And like most technologies, GPUs are getting faster. And in 2010, NVIDIA introduced a new Quadro card based on the Fermi architecture. What we're hopeful for in this next generation of products from NVIDIA is that they're going to build on the success that we've had with the GPU work that we've done in the recent past. Where we want is we want to have things as interactive as possible. We want to bring that experience to the creative process so that they're not even thinking about technology. Technology is never something that should be thought about in this facility here. Technology is just the way you get to what you're after. And it's part of our DNA, and it will continue to be so.